Here we're going to consider the harmonic oscillator quantum mechanically. There'll be a series of three lectures. In this one, we're going to set up the Schrodinger equation. Uh, in the second lecture, we'll solve the Schrodinger equation. In the third lecture of the series, we will talk about the solutions of the Schrodinger equation. All right, first, how do we set up the Schrodinger equation for harmonic oscillator? Well, we start with the Schrodinger equation, h psi equal e psi. h is the Hamiltonian, which is the operator for total energy. And that, of course, will give the eigenvalues for total energy. And then psi here are the eigenfunctions. So Hamiltonian, total energy, kinetic energy plus potential energy. The kinetic energy we've used uh, quite a bit so far. That is just minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to some spatial coordinate or coordinates. And here's the potential operator. We saw when we treated the harmonic uh, oscillator classically that the potential for harmonic oscillator is 1 half kx squared. So this is the Schrodinger equation for an harmonic oscillator. And uh, we also saw that uh, for the harmonic oscillator, we replace the square root of k over m to be frequency. So k is equal to frequency squared times mass. So let's go ahead and put that substitution in there. So this is the Schrodinger equation we want to solve. Now let's um, manipulate that equation and see if we can get it into a familiar form that we already know the solution. So I'll just reproduce the Schrodinger equation here minus h bar squared over 2m times the um, second derivative. Actually, this is just one dimension, so we'll just make total derivative, second derivative, plus that potential, which is 1 half, uh, we omega squared m times x squared. We substitute in for k there. That's just equal to e psi. So let's uh, manipulate this equation. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by 2m uh, minus 2m over h bar squared. So we can just, uh, and by the way, this should be multiplied by psi. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by minus 2m over h bar squared. So this will just give this by itself. That's what we want because we can maybe recognize a easily solvable differential equation. And then we multiply this by minus uh, or 2m over h bar squared. That becomes minus omega squared m squared over h bar squared x squared. That is operating on psi. That's equal to multiplying by minus 2m, so it's minus 2me over h bar squared times psi. Let's uh, multiply, we'll bring this over here, bring that over there, so we have, and I'll put the operate on psi there, so it'll be a second derivative of psi with respect to x squared. That's equal to, I'll put all those things over there, minus 2me over h bar squared, take this thing over there, plus omega squared m squared over h bar squared x squared, that whole thing, times psi. Now, remember, uh, the differential equations we've had so far are something like uh, second derivative of psi with respect to x squared. That's equal to some, say, k squared, some constant. That's not the force constant, uh, times psi. So let's contrast and compare, because we know the solutions to these. Well, so far, so good. But on this side, oh, shoot. It's this x squared term that makes things more complicated. This is a constant, doesn't depend on x. So if we just had this term, that'd be OK. But in fact, we have a term that contains x on it. So that means that all of our methods uh, that we use so far to solve differential equations can't be used on this because of that x squared term. So we're going to have to use another way to uh, solve this differential equation. We don't have to make it up by ourselves. Uh, back in the 1800s, uh, this, these kinds of equations were studied very thoroughly, and they already know the solution. So we'll go through that, how they got the solution and so on in the next lecture. And the lecture after that, we'll look at the solutions in more detail.